problem solved. I solved the problem. I put my phone on do not disturb so no messages or anything can pop up like it did last time we played this because that was a disaster. And thank you Ant-Man for holding up my camera. You, you, you won't get that but hello, uh, welcome back. Welcome to Choice of Broadsides. Last time we played this, uh, they were trying to talk to us about finding a guy and settling down and all that other stuff. Uh, anyway, next chapter. The peace with Gaul does not last. Before long, hostilities have resumed and the Admiralty is building back up its Royal Navy to combat the Gaulish threat to the freedom of the seas. The letter arrives by special messenger very early on a cold morning. He slit the seal. He orders, your orders are written in fine black script on heavy cream colored paper. It reads, you are requested and required to assume, come on. I thought, well, well then, well then, well then, well then. It reads, you are requested and required to assume command of H.M. Sloop Defender. Your own command at last. At the crack of dawn, you walk to the end of the long pier where you first catch sight of H.M. Sloop Defender. It's not all that you might have hoped for. There are barnacles on the hull, the sails are tattered at the edges, the paint is worn. It's no better as you find yourself standing on the dirty, uneven deck, introducing yourself to your first and only lieutenant. Welcome aboard, Defender, ma'am, says Madame Bar Benton. Benton. Okay, proudly. Finest, finest sloop in the Navy. Her uniform looks as if she'd put it on in the dark. She wouldn't know the finest sloop in the, in the, <coughs> in the Navy if it raked her with a broadside. You promptly draw out the orders from the Admiralty placing you in command of H.M. Sloop Defender. When you finish reading your orders aloud to the crew, you are officially the new mistress and commander of the sloop. Yeah, we do good. We go. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot a familiar sailor. Mistress's mate, Jones. Ah, make that just Jones. Since she was disarrayed in connection with the unpleasant business with Madame Piggott back on H.M.S. Courageous. She greets us, she greets you with a respectful salute, but she's obviously disappointed to find herself in your command again. As if you didn't have enough to worry about. Why gish wow. Wow. Thanks, thanks. Glad you like being in my command. Captain Barton, ma'am, says a middle aged woman coming up from below deck. Carter reporting for duty. I'm the senior mistress's mate and acting mistress of Defender. A post captain would have a sailing mistress under her as the most senior warrant officer, but on a sloop the commander is technically also the mistress. You still have a few mistresses mates, experienced ratings, working to get their warrants as mistresses in the Royal Navy. Madame Carter, as the senior mate, will fill the role of a sloop's sailing mistress in all but title. Madame Carter, you reply, make the sloop ready for some shakedown maneuvers. I want to see his capabilities. Aye, aye, ma'am. You inspect Carter for care. Okay, C-3PO, you need to calm down. Sorry. But, mm, you inspect Carter carefully as she readies the sloop for basic action. You quickly realize that this woman is the only force holding the sloop together. Benton gives orders, but Carter has them followed. Under Carter's guidance, you manage to get the sloop out onto open waters. The shakedown maneuvers are embarrassing. You sail the sloop around, clear for battle, and fire off a broadside. The sails are not hauled taut. It takes longer to raise and lower the sails than it should, and it takes much longer, a full minute or more, to clear the sloop for action than it ought. The broadside is ragged and slow, and one sailor injures herself by getting her foot crushed by a gun carriage. Ooh, that's not good. At this point, you believe that overall the crew is fairly unhappy and poorly disciplined. What makes you think of that, huh? You're going to have to turn this sloop into a credible fighting vessel. To do that, you'll have to put the women to work. It looks like this crew isn't particularly used to hard work yet. That's a shame. Where do you want them to focus their efforts? Uh, clean the sloop completely, drill them on gunnery, practice sailing maneuvers, 
I think sailing maneuvers can wait. I think they should learn on how to properly use the guns. For day after day, you drill the women on gunnery, you clear the sloop for action, run out the guns, and blaze away, with both broadsides as fast as the guns can be cleaned, loaded, run out, and fired. The work is dirty and hot, with blasts of heat and smoke every time the guns fire. Every broadside is timed with a tongue lashing or worse for any sailor who slows down the rifle, the firing. Ah, oh, did they say tongue, tongue, tongue lashing? Oh God. All right then. After hours of non-stop gunnery, you vary the pace for a bit, floating several empty barrels past the sloop. Your gun captains practice their aim as each gun fires at the target in turn. Right as the crew is beginning to relax, settling into the slower rhythm, you shout for them to resume full speed broadsides. Firing as fast as they can, when the women are completely exhausted, struggling through the routine, you order them to tie down the guns and restore the sloop to normal sailing conditions. Only to order the sloop cleared for battle, yet another broadside fired again. By the end of the day, the women stagger down for their dinner, and then the next day, starting with a tired crew, you do it all again. After several days of a brutal regimen, you see real improvement. The women are more alert, quicker when responding with the changes you will order. At the speed of your broadside is improved with the reload time reduced by nearly a third. The women groan as you order them to the guns each day, but slowly they are becoming a credit to the Royal Navy. However, it's clear that they haven't had to work this hard in quite some time. You managed to overhear a few surly grumbles from the crew, though you don't manage to catch any particular sailor grumbling. I'm just gonna... Can't take it easy. Oh no, Ant-Man died. Cameraman down. What task do you turn to next? Uh, we are going to start practicing sailing maneuvers because we need to get that under control. Thank you, Ant-Man. Concentrate. <coughs> For day after day, you drill the women on sailing. You hoist all sail, then send the hands aloft to lower and reef the sails. As soon as the last top woman is back on the deck, you send them back up to run reef and spread the sails again. You tack into the wind, rapidly switching your sailing points and drilling the crew on switching tacks. Then you bring the sloop about in order to the, the crew to quickly set the sails to run before the wind. As soon as they are done with that adjustment, it's time to turn across the wind. When the women have adjusted again, it's back to tacking into the wind. The work is hard and requires constant attention. Any carelessness? Bleh. Aloft could be deadly. Madam Carter times every maneuver with a tongue lashing, or worse, for any sailor who is slow about her duty. By the end of the day, the women stagger down for their dinner. And then the next day, starting with a tired crew, you do it all again. After several days of his brutal regimen, you see real improvement. The women are more alert, quicker in responding to the changes you order. The crispness and speed of the sloop's maneuvers improves, and you find that the sloop is both more maneuverable and faster than you had thought when you first assumed command. The women groan as you order them aloft each day, but slowly they are becoming a credit to the Royal Navy. The sloop's discipline increases greatly, but its happiness declines. You believe that overall the crew is fairly unhappy, yet reasonably disciplined. It's all about happiness, man. No one's ever happy. Sounds like a sounds like a, a worldwide problem. Well, you know. Yes, you're working the women hard. They go to sleep sore. They wake up sore. They do a long day's work, and they do it all again the following day. You're not sleeping so well yourself. In fact, it's the night watch pounds on the deck every night while you're trying to sleep. But they roll cannons. They roll cannon balls onto the gun deck and stomp their feet. You quickly begin to suspect that, suspect that they're doing this intentionally to torment you. It's a difficult crew, ma'am, volunteers Madam Carter. Many of these little lands women came from the jails. I've done what I can with them, but the previous captain and her lieutenant struggled to keep them in line. Identify the worst sailors and punish them. Punish lightly, or don't punish at all. Well, I'm not just going to let it slide. I mean... I'm not going to punish the whole crew, because maybe some of them aren't the problem. So, I think we should find out who the worst ones are, and put them in their rightful place. Can I say that? 
You're not good enough. Judge of character to separate the sheep from the goats. You wind up punishing sailors more or less randomly. The unlucky sailors receive double work duty, numerous lashes, and perhaps worst of all, they're cut off from rum completely. Yeah, how is that worse? I mean, that's cool. That's good. Anyone who's drinking rum, that's just filthy. That's, that's just gross. That's a vile drink. So good for them, yeah. We don't, they don't have rum. Now they're normal and they can be civilized people. Since their punishment has little to do with their behavior, this mostly serves to worsen your relationship with the crew. Discipline increases slightly, but happiness declines. It's always declining. One evening you head below deck as some of the women are taking dinner. You find Jones telling a body joke about the lavishous, lascivious habits of men in London. Oh my. She tells it quite well. You hadn't noticed before, but Jones has a certain natural charisma about her that makes her others turn to listen to her. Good going for you, Jones. What? No, I'm not gonna chastise Jones. No, I don't want to have her whipped. Keep an eye on her, but do nothing for now. You know what? I'm gonna join in, and I'm gonna tell a body tale of my own. Why am I... why, why would I punish her? They listen to your tale respectively, but it's a highly awkward moment. You're not... Just, you're just not likable enough to tell a story like this to your crew without seeming forced. At this point, you believe that overall the crew is very unhappy yet reasonably disciplined. I, I, feel, I feel like deja vu. I feel like we're in a loop right now because it's repeating the same thing. You guys feel like that? Because I sure do. A few days later, Madame Carter brings you a landswoman sailor whom she found asleep on watch. Terribly sorry, ma'am. She mumbles groggily. Whip her soundly, or arrange a questionable jury to have her court-martialed and hanged. What? No, dude, I thought that was just for pirates, you know? Put her on double wash and forbid her from rum. Let it slide. Well, I'm not just gonna let it go. This is kind of serious. I mean, she fell asleep on the job. Uh, I'm not gonna forbid her from rum. I mean, maybe some people need it. Yeah. Oh, God. I don't know what to do. I literally don't know what to do. I'm not gonna just, like, let her give her one chance and just kill her. I'm just- I guess I'll just whip her soundly, at least she won't die. As captain of the sloop, you have Her Majesty's authority to have any of her sailors flogged. How many lashes? Oh, dear God, we actually- Oh, God, okay. Five lashes, a sting, but no permanent harm. Ten lashes, she'll feel that for some time. Twenty lashes, she'll be unable to work effectively for a while. Thirty lashes, she should consider herself lucky that she won't be crippled. Fifty lashes, make an example of her. Oh, God. No. I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, ten lashes. Oh, I feel uncomfortable with this. She screams out in pain, but she's back at work later that day. Everyone seems to agree that she deserves it. Discipline increases slightly, as does happiness. There we go, now we're on a roll. As you head below deck, you see a handful of sailors and midship women whispering together, including Jones. As soon as they catch sight of you, they stop abruptly and go on their separate ways. Yeah, see, oh look at that, I was just talking about deja vu. You experience a brief moment of deja vu. As the girls call it. No, everyone calls it that. Now I'm confused, because this is happening again. Use a spy to find out what they are discussing. Uh, he might get caught. Loudly ask what they are whispering about. No, they won't say. Pull one of them aside to ask what they are whispering about. Or do nothing. It's happening again, but I think we should, I feel like we should do something. Just, I don't know which one to choose. Um... I guess I should pull one of them aside and ask them what they're whispering about. Who are you going to pull aside? I'm not going to pull aside one of the other sailors. We'll just pull aside Jones because, you know, you bring Jones into your cabin for questioning. What were those whisper- what were those women whispering about? She looks confused. Ma'am? I saw you there with Walker and Green. Ma'am, replies Joan slowly. We weren't whispering. Green was telling us a tale about her husband back in Albion. No, I'm gonna threaten her 
I don't know. I don't, oh, okay. Sorry, Ant Man. You need to focus. That's enough room for you. Threaten Jones. Don't lie to me, Jones, or I'll have you all flogged. Ma'am, she blurts, it's God's own truth, I swear it. Of course, saying otherwise at this point would be admission of guilt. On the other hand, maybe I should just have Walker and Green flogged, he suggests. Maybe you can provide me with information to spare your own hide. Uh, no, ma'am. She seems even more alarmed at this suggestion. Perhaps she's afraid of what the others might do if they thought she'd snitch. This is her last chance, Jones. After a pause, Jones looks you dead in the eye, almost disrespectfully. I'm sorry, ma'am, she says. There's nothing I can tell you. Well, I guess we're flogging them all. Whipping is not very good cure for mutinous intent. Their eyes see with raw hatred as they receive their lashes and return to work. At this point, you believe that overall the crew is fairly unhappy yet reasonably disciplined. There are definitely some bad apples in the crew. Well, great. Okay, no. I don't want to lose everyone's happiness. I don't like doing the discipline. I hate, I hate it. Next day, Madam Benton reports that Madam Carter has... Oh, no. In a fatal accident. Falling down the hatchway, ma'am. She must have overbalanced. You think it was really an accident? I don't know what's going on, but I'm not just going to assume that it was murder. Madam Carter was an experienced and expert sailor, but accidents do happen. Even to the most able sailors. Besides, the alternative is almost too horrible to contemplate. The question is, what are you going to do about it? I don't know, should we investigate the possible murder? I need to find out if this is an accident, and if not, who the murderer or murderers is, were. Seize the most likely suspects and proceed straight to a court-martial. It's better to be firm and swift in response than to be right, even if that means launching a witch hunt. Now, the ones that may, might seem like likely suspects, the problem is, I might be killing innocent people and I don't want to do that. Think about it some more, I to respond correctly and that's more important than acting quickly, especially because of maybe nothing. Ignore it, at least for now. Starting an investigation could lead to an open mutiny, and I can't risk that. I guess we're gonna think about it some more. You think carefully about the matter. Hours turn into days, and days turn into weeks. And the opportunity for action is lost. Happiness increases, but discipline decreases substantially. Oh, it's like a constant balance. If your happiness increases, discipline seems to go down. It's never in the same balance. You are now in the difficult position of selecting a new acting mistress. Madam Carter's two maids both leave something to be desired. There's MacDougall. Sorry. There's MacDougall, the senior mate. She's intelligent, but she usually diverts her intelligence toward finding clever ways to avoid work. Oh god. Hey, that sounds like me. She, you know she'll set a good example for the crew. Then there's Avery, the junior mate. She's staunchly loyal to you and to the ship, but that's about all you can say for her. She's simple-minded, to put it kindly. A moron, to put it plainly. Of course, there's also Jones, as commander of HM's sloop Defender. You have the authority to restore her to her old grades, mistress's mate. You could then promote her to acting mistress. Jones would certainly appreciate it. It might help to have another strong friend on the crew. Oh, restore Jones's grade and appoint her... I don't want to include her out. What about MacDougall? No, I don't want her because she's not a very good worker. I don't want to trust her work because she's new. She really doesn't work very well. I think I'm going to restore Jones's grade. Well, thank you, ma'am. It was really the least I could do, Madam Jones. You reply, emphasizing Madam. You won't live to regret it. I don't know, maybe. A few nights later, you awake with a start to the sound of shouts and clanging metal outside your cabin. You swing up out of bed, grabbing for your sword just as a team of armed sailors break down the door. They are led by Jones, whose face is twisted into a sneer. 
Not so powerful now, are you? She says scornfully over her shoulder. You can see the marine sentry and a sailor bleeding to death on the deck outside. Throw down that sword. What's going on? Do you? I can't win. I throw down my sword. Oh, I'm not gonna surrender, but I need to defend myself. I don't, I don't know. What is Jones up to? What the hell is happening? You attack so ferociously she stumbles back in surprise. Ruthlessly following up your advantage, you cut your way through the mutineers and manage to maneuver your way out of the cabin. On deck, you see that the mutiny is just getting started. Oh boy. You rally the loyalists and assess the, situ the tactical situation. Though parts of the crew were unhappy enough to risk their lives to kill you, notwithstanding your efforts to build discipline, the numbers are still on your side. For now. We must retake control of this ship, you shout, and the women surrounding you nod. Some of them are armed with blades or pistols. Some have only their bare hands, but at least they are all on your side. For all Bion, you yell. They follow you as you charge back down the deck, no longer fighting defensively, but now actively attacking anyone in your way. From around the corner come a contingent of mutineers, some of the ones who broke into your cabin, and some others. They stop when they see you party off. When they see your party of loyalists, you stop too. Your two groups are glare at each other for a long time. Glare at each other along the deck. Light glistens off the blades of their cutlasses. What do you do? Bluff them into surrendering, or charge down the deck and engage them directly, or grab a pistol from one of your loyal women and start shooting from here? I don't know, maybe we can trick them into surrendering. You've lost, you declared loudly. Lay down your weapons! One of the mutineers spit an oath at you, and then the whole group comes charging up the deck. Well, that went well. Your loyalists meet them squarely and then the battle is engaged. Someone in the crowd whips out a pistol and fires. A bullet? Oh god. Oh no. Not my shoulder. Oh, our shoulder has been shot. And our vision contracts you with pain. That doesn't stop you. Shouting and slashing, you fight mutineers for control of your command. The battle is long and bloody, but in the end, the loyalists are victorious. Easily a dozen women have died, and a further two dozen more are unable, are unable to work. But with that show of force, you have put down the mutiny and reestablished control of your sloop. And that is the end of the chapter, which means that I'm going to end this video here. I'm liking this story. It's, it's really good. I like it a lot. But that kind of took a dark turn. But that's really cool. I mean, I'm really enjoying the way this story is going. Um... Yeah, hopefully you guys will be able to see more of this in the future. Um, maybe some longer episodes. We can read more chapters together and go through, develop the story more. But for now, uh, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that button down below. And as always, I will catch you all in the next video. Stay awesome. Bye!